All right, so here's the ninth lecture. So the main topic is about uh, lemon point compactness. And lemon point compactness, as stated before, is other formulation of compactness. And is weaker than our actual definition of compactness. So before that, mathematicians trying to use this definition to define so-called compactness. And this turned out to be weaker, but it coincided with compactness and metric space. In metric space, our talk is equivalent. Okay, so here's the definition. So x is a limit point compact if every infinite subset of x has a limit point. Okay, so if, if you're if it is subset of x, then you have a limit point in x. So here leads to the theorem is that compactness implies limit point compactness, but not conversely. So as stated, uh, it is weaker than actual compactness. And the converse is not true. Okay, so compactness, compactness implies limit point compactness, but not conversely. Okay. So the proof is that, well, given X is compact, we're gonna show that it's limit point compact, right? So we pick an element A in X, and we show that if A has no limit point, then A is finite. So we're uh, we're proving by contrapositive, right? So if A is infinite, it has a limit point. And we, if we show that if A has no limit point, then implies A is finite, then we have shown what we want, right? So if A has no limit point, then A is equal to A closure, which means that A is closed, right? So for any point in A, since A has not a limit point, which means that it, there exists a neighborhood of A such that if you intersect with A, it gives you only A itself. Okay, that is the definition of not being a limit point. Well, then we can cover x by the set x minus a and all the uas, right? So all the uas covers a, and you adjoin this to the collection, then you obtain a open cover, right? Because a is closed, right? So the set is open. Now, f is compact, then it gives you a finite subcover. Well, this these two sets are disjoint, right? So we say that oh, A is can covered by finitely many of the UIs, right? Which means that A is a finite set. Okay, so here we have proved this direction. And we want to show that this direction does not hold. So we just give an counter example. Well, we let Y define uh, to be the two-point uh, two set. Then we define the topology on this set. It's just the set itself and the empty set. The trivial topology and we let x denote the product topology of natural numbers and y okay so with this topology all non-empty subset of x has a limit point okay so does infinite subset right so all non-empty subset of x has a limit point why because well for any subset of x we, we need an element either n a Right, if it's in form of n and a and s, then n b is a limit point of s. Okay, why? Because any neighborhood of n b, the second coordinate must be the whole a and b. Right. Now, it. Well, this intersects s at n a. Okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter about the first coordinate. We just we know that the second coordinate, right? If you um, just think, forget about the first coordinate, right? The second coordinate, like the only neighborhood you have is just the entire space. Why, right? So, um, if it's a there's a limit point because well for any neighborhood of nb but not this set right not equal to this well na clearly does not equal to nb right and and it intersects intersects s right well the neighborhood could be could like nb right it's neighborhood like the first part like is either order topology uh, like say n minus 1 n plus 1 times 
A, B, right? Well, this is a neighborhood of N, clearly, and it intersects at S, and then this at N, A, right? Because N is in here and A is in here, right? So, and by symmetry, like N conversely, right? N conversely, if you have N, B, then N, A is a limit point. Okay, so it is limit point compact. But this space is not compact, right? Because open sets UN, well, these are the open sets, right? The single point set, if you just consider the subspace topology of order topology inherited from the real numbers, right? Then, well, then this space is isolated space, right? Single point sets are open, right? Well, this has no finite subcover, right? Obviously. Okay, so we have shown what we uh, claimed at the very beginning. And before we go to the uh, next theorem, we need a new definition, which is called sequentially compact. It states that every sequence in X has a convergent subsequence. Okay, so for those who took calculus, you might say, oh, this is the boson of water stress. Yeah, this is very similar to that. Like, every sequence in X has a convergent subsequence. Well, we in, in real analysis, we said every uh, sequence in a closed interval has a convergent subsequence. Uh, close it all on the real numbers, right? But will it will be shown that under metrizable spaces, sequentially compact, limit point compact, and compact are equivalent, right? And we already know that the closed interval are compact, which means that they're sequentially compact, which means that every closed interval, every closed sequence in a closed interval has a convergent subsequence, right? So we just prove the boils down over stress as a corollary, as an easy consequence. So that's like the power of topology. So the theorem, the, the statement is that, yeah, I just told you guys, right? If you're metrizable, that these three are uh, equivalent. Compact, lemon coin compact, and sequentially compact. Okay, so this is what we want to prove. Okay, so one to two, we just did one to two. So we want to do two to three. So limit point compact implies sequentially compact, okay? So we'll let x be limit point compact, and we give it a sequence. We let a be the range of the sequence, okay? Sequence x in. Now, if the range is finite, then we're done, right? Because you, you have a subsequence that is constant, which converges trivially. Now, if the range is infinite, if the range is infinite, we are given that as limit point compact. So we can fix the point and the limit point of A prime. Because X is metrizable, right? So we can talk about balls here. I mean, the epsilon balls. Or we can choose N1 such that X is N1 is in the center of X with radius 1. Right? And it does not enter, it is not equal to X, right? Because it is a limit point. And inductively, suppose that n1 to n at i minus 1 is chosen, we choose n i so that it is greater than n i minus 1, and n i is in this radius of x, right? So this is a standard trick, right? And this is doable because we have infinite intersection. And now this subsequence converges to x, right? This subsequence converges to x. Right, because this gets smaller and by the Archimedean property, blah blah blah. Okay, so um two to three, two to three, we're done. Now we want to do that three to one, which then the equivalence is shown. Okay, so three to one. We want to show that sequentially compact implies compact. Okay. So first we're gonna show that sequentially compact implies that the Lebesgue number lemma holds, okay? So you, this holds for compact spaces, but we want to show that this also holds for sequentially compact spaces, okay? Uh, warning that, well, this does imply that, well, sequential compact implies this, and compact also implies this. We have not already, do, we, we know this already, but this, we cannot say that, well, they imply each other, right? This is like, it's like the most stupid way to think, right? We can't say that. Okay, so we want to show this is first. 
there's nothing to do with actual compactness here. It's just a supporting level. Okay, so we let A be an open cover of X. So we suppose for a contradiction that the lemma falls, which means that no delta, there's no delta positive such that for any set with diameter less than delta, there is an element contains it. Right, so we suppose it is false, which means that for any n, there exists a set with diameter less, so for any 1 over n, greater than 0. Right? So this is actually what I'm saying. There exists a set such that the diameter is less than this, and none of the a contains it. Okay, so we just focus on this statement here. We want to, sh so we want to use this statement to derive a contradiction. Now we let c n be such set. Right? So for any n, x is set. Well, we just let the set be c n corresponding to like, like we just c n be such set. So we're gonna pick pick an element, right? Then. Well, we have xn and cn for all n, right? For all n, then we can have a converging subsequence. Say it converges to some point a. Well, then a must be lines in some open set a on the from the collection because you covered x, right? You covered x, and because it's metrizable, right? We can talk about balls. We can pick a ball that is contained in a because a is open. Now. What we actually want to do is that, well, we can pick an i such that it is 1 over n i's less than epsilon over 2. So this will imply the diameter of c n i. The diameter of c n i is less than epsilon over 2, right? Because the diameter of c n i is just equal to 1 over n i. Yeah, right. This, this is by our definition be such set, right? Diameter. So diameter is less than this. Which means that C and I is in the epsilon over two ball of X and I, right? Because for any point, C and X and I is less than equal to the diameter, which is less than equal to epsilon over two. So for any point in C, it is epsilon over two close to X and I, okay? And now we can pick I also sufficiently large such that we have it is epsilon over two close to a, right? Because we have this convergence. We're given. We're given. Uh, we have the convergence, right? So we can pick i such that the like sum of the members that is epsilon over two close to a. Then this we use triangle inequality, right? If you're this close to a, then c and i is an epsilon ball of a. So why? Because for any element. Um, C A is less than equal to what C X and I X and I A, right? So we're actually using this. So, uh, well, this thing is less than epsilon over two. We already know that because, and this is also epsilon over two. So the whole thing is less than epsilon, right? <laughs> which is an which is a contradiction because we say that. The ci is not contained in any of the open sets, but here we construct. We have a we have from our construction we have a contradiction. Right? Okay, so the Lebig le Lebig lemma holds. And now step two is we want to show that sequentially compact implies that for any epsilon greater than zero, we have a finite cover x by the epsilon balls if you're sequentially compact. So again, we prove it by con uh, contradiction. So suppose that we, there is an epsilon such that no finite collection of balls covers x, right? So here, from this, we might guess that we'll start constructing sequences, right? So first we pick an element, uh, arbitrary x1 as the ball is a proper subset of x, right? Because you no finite collection no finite sub no finite collection covers x right so you cannot cover x you're a single element right so we can pick an x2 that is uh, not in the ball and inductively suppose that x1 x2 xn is chosen we pick xn plus 1 to be that you are an x but you are not in the union of all the previous balls okay <laughs> 
your nut and all the previous balls. Well, this is always doable because no finite collection covers x, right? So we have this construction. And we have that, and we also, for this, from this, we see that, well, you're not in any of the balls, which means that x n plus i, n plus 1, and x i are epsilon far. Because you're not in a ball, then you're epsilon far, right? You guys are far away for all the i, for all the previous ones, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so... For this um, construction, we see that for any x, we consider the epsilon over 2 ball. <laughs> okay? For any x, we have this epsilon over 2 ball. So if x contains two elements from the sequence, <laughs> which means that by triangle inequality, right, x is in the center, xi, xj, their distance is less than this, and each of them is epsilon over 2, epsilon over 2. So this is epsilon. I mean, this is, um, this distance is squared equal to epsilon, right? I mean, no, less than epsilon. <laughs> yeah, by triangle equal, yeah, 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 so they're less than epsilon. Which is a contradiction by our construction. And we have our construction like this. Which means that for any point in a space, x contains at most one element so you can't have any converging subsequence right because for any converging if you converge if you have a limit then every epsilon ball must contain infinitely many elements but here right you have a ball that contains only one so if you can shrink this ball small small enough such that it contains none of them right Okay, so, so here's a contradiction, okay? So from step one, we have the Lebesgue lemma holds. Step two, we have this, um, the existence of finite balls for arbitrary epsilon. And here the fun begins. We're gonna prove the actual proof, which is step three, okay? So, so we wanna show that X is compact, right? So we give it any open covering well, we let delta be the Lebesgue number of the given collection. We let epsilon be the delta over 3. So you might wonder why, it's just to make our uh, estimation neat. Okay, so epsilon is delta over 3. Well, then we can cover them by finite epsilon balls. Okay, so for each ball, B epsilon, the diameter is less than 2 over 3 delta. Why? because you're a delta ball. So by triangle inequality, right, the diameter should be less than equal to two over three delta, which means that we have uh, delta to be the Lebesgue, le no, Lebesgue number. Then B delta is in some A, right? This is a, the statement of Lebesgue number lemma, right? So if all these B delta covers X, those A's of course also covers X because Right, so pick an element from A for all such B delta, then we have a finite subcover. Okay, so this concludes this um, section. Okay. <laughs>